We all have that one subject that causes us difficulties. It can lead to despair and nervous breakdowns due to our inability to understand it. Just thinking about your next exam fills you with anxiety and you're already pretty sure that you're going to end up giving up and crying in it. It makes you ask yourself, why on earth do I have to learn this? What use is it going to bring to me in my day-to-day -day life? For many of us, this dreaded subject is math. Math seems to have this stigma surrounding it. That only smart people can do math and that everybody else just has to push through the pointless suffering until they graduate and are free from looking at an equation ever again. But if this were the case, why would math be one of the few subjects that's in the core curriculum of almost every single school in the world? Clearly, there must be a reason why we're forced to do high school and more advanced level math. The truth is, you don't do math because you're smart. You do math because it makes you smarter. I remember deciding to take a hard level of math in school just to see what it was like. I was sure it wasn't going to last long, especially as I entered with very average math skills to start with. On the first day, I perfectly remember we had a homework where we were assigned 56 questions. And I was able to do two. So the next day, I announced to my teacher that I was dropping the course. And I don't know how he managed to manipulate me into staying in it and keeping at it, but I'm so grateful he did. I've learned more than I ever expected to in the class, but more importantly, it's had a huge impact on the way I think. In math, every step needs to be perfectly coherent with the next. You can't just change a negative to a positive to reach your desired result. And this structured way of thinking proves really useful when it comes to finding incoherencies in arguments, explanations, or even your own understanding. It turns you into a person who's constantly asking questions because you need to know how everything links together. Your own understanding of math has probably helped you, even without you noticing it. Just think about how you managed to understand the following concepts. How ages go from BC to AD, it's really intuitive when you just think of it as a scale, with B seeming negatives, A seeming positives, and 1 being the birth of Christ. How do we understand the concept of a vacuum, of empty space? Because we accept the notion of zero. Why is it that when your physics teacher explains to you what antimatter is, you don't freak out? Because you understand that negatives and positives can act in equal and opposite ways. You understand seconds, minutes, hours, and how there's 60 times 60 times 24 seconds in a day. You also understand that time can't go backwards. It must always be positive. But math isn't just useful to navigate the world. It also helps with the development of your brain. It's all about making connections and seeing patterns. And because of this, it creates the basis for systematic thinking. It helps you develop your ability to analyze and solve problems, to work on unfamiliar tasks with confidence, and to, through trial and error, integrate different principles to arrive to rational decisions. These are cognitive resources that can help anyone, regardless of their future career plans. Scientific proof that math can help with the development of your brain, despite natural abilities, was found by a couple of researchers at a Neuroimages Cognitive Unit. What they did is that they scanned the brains of children and followed them through their mathematical development until the age of 21. They found that the way three parts of their brain communicated, which is usually what predicts mathematical ability, changed over time depending on how well it was trained. And one of the best ways to train these parts of your brain was through doing math. Another research found that processing high-level math concepts uses the same neural networks as the one a child is born with. This means that not only does math train your brain and make you smarter, but also that to do so, you just have to use the same skills that you did in third grade doing simple algebra. Mathematics also has a very interesting impact on the future of the economy. The 20th century economic success of the United States was fueled by advances in science and technology, from Ford's Model T to Apple's Macintosh. Designing, building, and selling these products is what gave the US one of the highest standards of living at the time. However, the number of American students who are choosing math-related degrees is decreasing. If so many students 
choose to not study beyond basic math courses. He can put the future scientific, technological, technological and medical research and development of society at risk. So you probably understand, math is pretty important. But to motivate students to do math requires so much more than that. Because most of us much prefer short-term than long-term satisfaction. So what do we do? Being able to manage to do one hard math question can lead to a like, surge of dopamine and satisfaction. However, being unstuck on one for hours can lead to complete loss of motivation and self-esteem. Because of this, of course, all levels of math should be respected, and students should be able to be at a level that they can achieve, but that is also very challenging in a fun way. Mathematical courses and textbook, textbooks include little to none on the history and background of mathematics. Yet the evolution of this subject and the great minds behind it, I personally find the most interesting part of the experience of learning math. You can learn about decades of mathematical history in just a couple of classes. And it's filled with drama and disagreements between mathematicians. That is really interesting. So I believe that teachers should include this just casually, without exams or anything, in their classes to make the experience much more fun. But overall, we have to stop seeing math as a burden, but rather as a tool that will help us succeed right now. It doesn't take the IQ of a genius to harness the brain-building power of math. Determination is much more important than natural skill. Brains have both a capacity for growth and a natural skill. They're not limited to one or the other. You probably won't ever have to use the quadratic equation in your adult life, as I'm sure most of you haven't. But to do so, to learn how to, helps you when it comes to making more complex decisions down the road. Math, it's not about becoming better at math, but becoming better at thinking. Recently, I went back to those 56 questions. And I'm glad to say that now I can do more than two of them. And if not, almost all. <laughs> but it's not about that. That isn't what matters. What matters is I tried to figure them out. And in doing so, laid down new ways of thinking that helped me make decisions in other areas of study and life. If one has the opportunity to learn mathematics, one has to take it. We have to stop seeing it as a punishment forced on us by evil, uncaring teachers, but rather as a way to deal with, as Shakespeare said, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Thank you.